so I'm Clarisse Bardio. I'm a professor of um, contemporary uh, performing arts history in France. And uh, this is um, not usual for me, but it's a project about contemporary music and especially about electroacoustic uh, electro music. So um, the context is um, the archives of the uh, Arts Studio, who, um, so which is a French experimental rock band uh, at the beginning. Uh, so the name of this rock band was Arzoid. It was founded in 69 by Rocco Fernandez. And from 71 to uh, 97, it was led by Thierry Zabolzev and Gérard Urbet. And after that, Gérard Urbet took um, took the entire lead of Arzoid until he passed away in 19, um, sorry, in 2019. And so in his career, uh, Gérard Robert moved from experimental rock to electroacoustic music. At first, uh, mostly dedicated to the creations and performances of the band Arzoid, the studio starts also very early on to host residencies and produce works by other composers, as well as educational and transmission uh, projects. So upon the death of composer Gerard Robert in 2019, the urgency of archiving and preserving the numerous documents and files associated with all the musical works stored at Arzoid Studio led to the start of an archival project. So this desire extends also today to all the composers in residency in this institution uh, in the past, present, and future, so that it can become useful in a broader scale for the documentation and preservation of electroacoustic music. So just to uh, show you uh, what this kind of music uh, look like and not sounds like, <laughs> Um, we, uh, so the, the historical music works of Arzoid are a very typical case of technological obsolescence, uh, since most of the band's compositions have been, uh, through uh, the 18th, the 19th, and so on, composed for samplers. Specifically, what you see here, which are Akai uh, samplers, so uh, Akai S2000, 3000, and 6000, and they were used in large numbers during the live performances, generally controlled by several keyboards and also by electronic percussions. So today, uh, a complex procedure of data extraction and conversion is needed in order to manage rebuilding the samplers and to that the works can be re-performed on current computers. So archiving all these sample files and metadata was one of the first focus of the project. So this project is really about how to be able to replay these works, which are not so old, because we are speaking about uh, plays, uh, even that were uh, played um, 10 years ago, and we have to uh, really find ways to uh, re-perform them and to adapt them because of technological obsolescence. So the project was developed with multi multiple issues in mind. Uh, first one uh, is about archival issues because of the multimodal aspect of the collection and the amount of documents. Uh, we have samples, but we have also uh, a lot of printed files, manuscripts, but also uh, born digital archives. We have also legal issues uh, in order to clarify uh, the distribution rights. Uh, who is the proprietary, uh, the, the proprietary of the uh, different uh, pieces of the works. And, and so, of course, technical issues because of uh, digital obsolescence. And artistic issues because of the risk of integrity and identity loss during such a process. And this led uh, to a questionnaire that now um, we ask to every uh, composer coming to uh, Artzoid to fill in uh, in order to see if they agree uh, us, for example, to uh, migrate the work or to readapt it with new technologies and so on in order to be sure uh, that uh, we don't have um, integrity and identity issues uh, with the re-implementation of the works. And of course, uh, also distribution and transmission issues in order to find the ways to give access to future musicians, performers, researchers, and so on. 
So nonetheless, the main issue, given the way art thought and Gérard Robert has worked and composed in the past, was certainly the complexity brought by the multiple versions of each composition and the understanding and tracking of how these versions evolved over time. So we believe uh, in a very broad aspect that uh, regularly uh, replaying uh, these works is crucial for the preservation. It's because you replay the works that you preserve the work. Uh, so it's quite simple to say that, but it's more difficult uh, to do it. And by replaying them, we can find solutions to address obsolescence using various approaches like emulation, migration, or recreating them with new technologies. And uh, I have also to precise that uh, each works uh, require a specific approach. You cannot uh, make very, um, you cannot say we will treat all the works the same way. So every time you have a new work to replay, you have to find uh, the proper uh, solution for this work. And to promote replayability, it's also vital to increase the visibility of these works and accurately locate and describe them. That's why we propose an open and interoperable documentary system that combines modeling, description, and data publication related to the works. This system will facilitate widespread, widespread dissemination, especially for those interested in performing this repertoire from conservatory to professionals. So this project is really, um, of course, it's uh, useful for researchers, but it's also uh, focused on uh, performers and composers who want to replay uh, these works. So uh, this, um, uh, we, we hope that um, it will also help identify the key components of the works, for example, the scores, the sounds, the instructions, the technical data sheets, and so on, and track the evolution over time, because uh, each time you uh, replay the work, uh, you may adapt new technologies, so you have to document the new technologies, the new samples, and so on. So it's a never-ending <laughs> process. So our approach is characterized by the consistent use of open and interoperable solutions based on established uh, infrastructures in the digital humanities field. So we have addressed uh, these different issues through two main lines of research. First one is the documentation of the works, uh, which is the subject uh, of this talk today. And the second one is the migration of the works. Uh, so this is uh, another part of the project I won't go into details uh, today. But uh, just to say that these two axes are closely linked and each contributes to the preservation of the works. You cannot separate documentation and migration. Before proposing a global strategy, we relied on case studies of specific works composed by Gérard Roubet, and we began by identifying, gathering, and classifying the various files for each work with the aim of making them readable, usable, and easily accessible. So each archive file is made up of two parts, one covering all the data making up the work, so data of the work, and the other, the documentation relating to the work, data on the work. To do this project, uh, here I'm presenting alone, but uh, it's uh, really quite a huge team working on uh, this project. It required to set up an interdisciplinary team composed of researchers in digital preservation, performing arts, musicology, and information studies, as well as art conservators, musicians, composers, and computer music developers. So, uh, when we started the project, first we looked at uh, if, there was, if there was already something existing. And uh, the conclusion is that not exactly what we were looking for, but um, among the different uh, ontologies uh, in the music uh, field, there is the Doremus uh, model, uh, which is uh, one of the most complete uh, ontology. Uh, it offers a data model for describing music, making existing catalogs interoperable, 
uh, coming uh, at, the at the beginning of the project, it was really how to make uh, three huge databases in France interoperable from the National Library, uh, from Radio France, and from the Philharmonie de Paris, and how to publish all uh, this uh, data in the web of data in order to uh, foster um, also the uh, discovery of all uh, this data uh, by um, the, the French citizens. So the Doremus model is based on the uh, FMBRO conceptual model uh, with the description of the work as an intellectual entity and an approach centered on the content rather than on the specific career of a work. So this is a complete um, description of an artwork in Doremus. It's quite complex. Um, but uh, one of the uh, good things is that uh, it makes it possible to distinguish for the same work the different interpretations, the instruments used for the performance, and the corresponding orchestral parts, the performance according to the different performances and recordings, and so on. So uh, the Doremus ontology meets part of our needs, but with uh, two major uh, drawbacks. The first one is that while very rich and complex, it doesn't take into account the specificities of electroacoustic music. It was conceived uh, most uh, for uh, classical music. Second point is that there is no operational implementation allowing uh, data to be entered in a database. So when I found the Doremus project, I asked to um, the people behind them, OK, so where is the database? <laughs> and no, uh, there was no implementation, which is something that we usually experiment with ontologies. Uh, but the point is that uh, in the case of Arzold Studio, there is no archivist in the institution. And so ontologies are too much complex, and we need uh, very f easy, um, well, friendly tools to um, to implement the uh, ontology. Um, so this is why uh, we decided to also implement uh, the ontology in a database, which is a system by far preferred by non-expert uh, users. So. Uh, from that, uh, our approach is to simplify the data structure proposed by Doremus, and we aim to create a compatible and lighter conceptual data model named uh, Eulali that can be easily implemented in a standard database management system. So I'm going to describe it step by step with the following color code. So in a purple, you will have the artwork entity. Uh, blue for the expressions entities, and red and orange for the manifestation, for those uh, who like uh, FMBR uh, OO, and green for the people entities. So first thing is that we start with uh, the composition, uh, so which is the main entity uh, in our case, and um, so we will build the model around uh, the composition, so um, here it stands for the intellectual act of composing uh, set a certain, at a certain date with a certain title. And um, with Gérard Robert, it was also important to have alias uh, for different um, title which um, would uh, refer to the same work. And from that, uh, the composition generates, uh, generates expressions of uh, various kinds. Sorry. This first and uh, essential expression type is the existence of one of several versions described by a title and a date. And these versions can be gathered in inside a group or a cluster with uh, a title and by the list of composition uh, that it uh, includes. And uh, this uh, group can also appear in a performance with, again, a title, date, and location. And um, you have also, uh, of course, um, in, a, in a range, the albums and uh, the performances, which require uh, performers, which are person entities, here in green. I won't go too much into details, but um, we had to uh, we have to add also, um, we, we have to link 
uh, to two manifestations entities. The first one is about the creation process, which is to us really important to have the different versions, for example, with uh, different kinds of technologies for one work. And the other point uh, for um, electroacoustic music was really the score and the sample. Because uh, in the case of art zones, there is a lot of um, uh, use of uh, samples um, files. And to finish this description, the last entities are various manifestations linked to the shows, including the press, the programs, the technical writers, and the project files. So here we, ha we are with the, um, with the ontology. So this model therefore presents two aspects of the description of the archives, with first a tree structure to document all information on the conception and manifestations of each work on various levels, from the composition process to the various versions and their recordings or performances, and then to attach documents, whether they are technical or historical, to these entities in order to have all the elements needed to re-perform a piece in the future. So in terms of interoperability, this model is rather similar uh, to Doremus and can be also transposed to uh, RDF. To ensure uh, ease of use for users with varying uh, technical expertise, we have chosen to implement Olali in a database system called ERIST. It offers an intuitive interface for managing the database, including model implementation, data input, and querying. Herist uh, uses a MySQL engine, which can be accessed remotely without the need for installation, configuration, or publication. And uh, in our case, we use the uh, Emanuel uh, instantiation. So I will just show you a short uh, demo of uh, this uh, database. No. Okay, it doesn't play. <laughs> okay, I don't know why. Sorry for that, it was working just before. Uh, so you will have to trust me. Um, so this database is uh, very uh, easy to use for uh, really non-archivist uh, specialists and so on. And then you will find the same structures and in uh, the ontology, but you will have the different uh, categories that I've, sh uh, that I've shown you uh, on, on the ontology. And um, so it's, uh, and then there is also a, a web uh, publication uh, that you can um, see uh, online. So uh, if you want to copy uh, the database, you can uh, go to uh, Eris to menu and you will see the database. You have to ask your password. <laughs> Uh, and then it will be, uh, it's also possible to copy it uh, from Humanium without uh, asking for anything. Uh, the goal also was uh, to have a model which could be used in different um, electroacoustic uh, music institutions in order for them to have a model uh, they could copy and paste and use it uh, just uh, very easily. And from uh, that, because we have like, um, seven or eight uh, centers for uh, electroacoustic music in France. And if they all use this model, then it will be interoperable. And if at some point uh, they want to connect uh, each of them their, their database, then interoperability is not an issue. So it was also how to foster interoperability. Of course, we have the ontologies, but uh, as I said, it's sometimes quite difficult to implement. So the implementation, it's also a way uh, to foster interoperability um, from uh, the different uh, institutions, uh, cultural institutions working with uh, electro music, uh, electroacoustic music um, collections. So uh, there is a data paper uh, describing the ontology and uh, the how to how to do. Uh, at this stage, everything is in French, uh, but we will short publish it in, uh, in English. And in a few days, uh, we will have a paper on the uh, Francophone Digital Humanities Journal, uh, which will be published uh, describing with more details uh, this project. 
Thank you.